Uh, welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And uh, we have uh, Chris Harris here. Uh, Chris, you don't have anything major, uh, but I'm going to do what I call the what-if list. Uh, we had two major quakes off of Chile. We know that a, almost exactly a year before the major quake that struck with the tsunami, uh, Japan, northern Japan in the Fukushima Daiichi area, and swamped the uh, generators because they didn't have backup power. It was further inland. They could have easily just had backup generators, say, two or three miles inland at a higher elevation, and it would have been fine, even though the plant was initially covered by water, just because it had power to make sure that they didn't lose control. Um, what The what-if situation is this. We have two major quakes there. We're seeing other earthquakes in the Ring of Fire. Uh, if you look at patterns, I'd say the chances in the next year of a major quake that's going to disrupt not only Fukushima, but five other sites that were damaged during the last quake of March 11th is a virtual guarantee. So now, between now and next year, all hell's going to break loose. It could be as early as a month. It'll tend to occur around what's called uh, times when the moon is closest to the Earth on the supermoon. Uh, number two, it'll be at times when there's planetary alignments. It'll be at times when there's equinoxes. It'll be at times when there may be a gravity wave coming from the center of the galaxy if a star plunges into the event horizon because those gravity waves can cause the same effect on the plasma per 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 uh, perturbations of the magnetosphere and trigger off earthquakes and volcanoes the same way as the CME can trigger off an earthquake or volcano. So all of those things, does that make sense to you that all these galactic and solar events and the current history suggest that we're now much more likely to see a major quake completely blow the mush, I call it the oatmeal mush holding up these buildings that are subsiding in Fukushima, increasing the chances that they're not going to be able to continue removing fuel rod assemblies or controlling anything. They're not even into plant number one, two, and three. They're not doing anything. And the, the kind of silly picture looks like Wally, this little robot that's kind of laying over on its side or on its back. And they can't even get a transmitter in there to actually even put the battery pack back in it or even transmit to this robot. So they're just doing nothing. They just have a camera to say, this looks bad, and it's looked bad for over a year. Um, tell us your analysis of what I mentioned there on a couple of things, the space weather, the earthquakes, and the robot, and, of course, the, the dancing that they're doing to pretend they're doing something around Fukushima. They're just waiting for the next catastrophe to strike, aren't they? And, by the way, they're now, Abe government sending the people back to death to go to highly radioactive areas with children, middle-aged people and older people to go back to their homes in Fukushima and the adjacent prefectures like Oi. This is really, really evil. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I mean, there was a, an article from Arnie Gunderson looking for hot particles, and it looks like it's actually got evidence that somebody signed hot particles. Let me just give you a, a, a little breakdown of how hot a particle is ejected from the core, which is from obviously from unit one, two, and three. Well, he had a number that was a four followed by 19 zeros of Becquerel's per kilogram. Now, I didn't check the math, and I didn't check anything else, but that's, that's a, lot a of very, zeros. very big number. That's a lot of zeros. I don't even know what you call that. You know, well, but that I, I don't think I have to call it anything. There's a term called a Google, which is a number so dang big no. that when it's that big, it means whatever it is is absolute. So if you see something that radioactive, it's like, this is like death. The neutron annealing effect on crystal structure, the jamming of microchips so normal robots couldn't function, the effect on living things, which neutron annealing would just completely shatter the DNA like cosmic rays. It's not possible for living things or integrated chips or even the crystal structural metal to be uh, stable. Right, and uh, one of the uh, interesting takeaways from that article was that houses and homes concentrate because people walk in with the heat, and you know, they, even in Japan, you do take off your shoes, you come in. And well, it, it's, it, still, it, it's still it, a collector. That, yeah, what you're saying is people should already treat it as a hazmat. This is hazmat. Exactly. This is going to be my summary article. First off, you should have a place like a porch or an outside area that's enclosed or at least covered where you can have raincoats, uh, boots, places for decontamination, uh, ability to kind of spray off your boots to keep them outside so that you don't tromp in these things from outside where the radioisotopes are landing on the ground. And they're going to bioaccumulate over time, and then they're going to bioaccumulate in your house. 
and even normal cleansing isn't going to remove them all. They're going to embed in the in the in the carpets and the drape and the wood. They're going to embed in the walls because they're going to be kicked up and end up in the in the uh, wallpaper or the paint. They're going to embed on counters because they're going to get uh, you know carried in and end up on pets. Um, people need to start realizing that bioaccumulation is 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 not good, and uh, the bioaccumulation is going to be a real big deal here. We have a Canadian student that took the seafood in 2012 that was being sold in Canadian grocery stores and found the radiation level was mind-bogglingly high. But remember, that was at a time when we were getting mainly short-acting isotopes like iodine-131, which is still happening. But the longer ones, because they bioaccumulate, the concentrations are really skyrocketing. And so the, the Pacific Ocean has such a higher concentration now that rainwater that's coming out of the Pacific is going to carry a lot more of these longer-acting isotopes inland all over not just the northern hemisphere in America, but also in Europe and right across the entire uh, northern hemisphere. So that Canadian student did something the Canadian government didn't want to, and their standards for radiation are even higher than the obscene levels for America. Their solution to the problem wasn't, we're going to fix the problem, we're going to properly test the food, water, etc. It's we're going to raise the standard. So, Chris, what do you think of that? Well, I... I I happen to uh, think that uh, that's exactly right because uh, you know the, the scary part about finding one hot particle and that it was actually found several. Uh, well, there's got to be more, and the, right. they're very hard to detect. They're very potent, and uh, yeah, we got to treat it. We have to treat the homes almost like uh, it's like a reverse of an operating room. You keep it sterile and keep it. Well, I guess we'll do like an right. operating room, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Just step off bed with. Uh, a clean, uh, a clean area on the inside instead of right. the outside. So, yeah, and uh, so, yeah, that uh, that that makes a lot of sense to me. The thing is, the one particle, there's going to be more. There's a lot more because you know, right. before at least about a year or three, was sneezed out and and spread all over the place like a virus. So, right. Yeah. But one of the things I want to mention too is a little more technical. Um, I tried to do this after nine eleven with the World Trade Center debris. And it basically got slammed on everywhere, <clears throat> including local labs, including Geordie Labs, which is up in Bellingham, Washington, even my old alma mater, uh, labs as far away as Germany, Switzerland, France, Britain, and even Japan. Um, that's because it wouldn't touch anything that dealt with 9-11 debris of the buildings there, because the stuff from the geological, U.S. geological actually proved that there were isotopes involved. But if you're clever enough in how you present the specimen, you can present a piece of cod, from the North Pacific Ocean, or um, you know, deep water fish there, or you can talk about lettuce or other things, and send it off to Geordie Labs, at J O R D I Labs, LLC, and they're up in in uh, Bellingham, Washington. And in fact, I think I'll post a link up so people can do it themselves. The tests are not cheap, but if you want to do them, uh, or you get a group of people together, you can actually do these tests. Uh, they service accounts worldwide, including uh, U.S. accounts, Mexico, United Kingdom, all over the world. They have uh, ancillary labs that are affiliated with them. Uh, if you need to contact them, uh, it's Clinton, sorry, Clinton, uh, C L I N T O N at JordyLabs.com. Clinton at JordyLabs.com. And their phone number is 877 337 9589. The reason why I say this is we're, I'm going to be one of the test sites, and we're going to have the expert on, which is uh, David Crane, uh, who's been on Jeff Rentz's program. David has, has offered to supply people with a lot of the affiliate materials they need and they just need to purchase a, a inspector USB which replaces the inspector plus and uh, you can be constantly uploading that data online live from your test site where you are so that we'll have actual numbers and when we come back we'll talk about this because a plasma neutron spectroscopy will tell you the isotopes in your veggies your codfish whatever you're trying to eat will give you real distribution of the isotopes present but it wasn't because I didn't know enough. Welcome back, and um, I'm just uh, sending off a little note to Clinton at Jordy Labs because I'm going to try to see if I can start sending out some food sample analysis myself, and other people should do the same. That's uh, really valuable for people to start not only join the uh, radiation detection station, which I'll be posting up the link there to how to do it with David Crane. Uh, and um, by the way, you can email David if you want to do a setup to D-C-R-A-I-N at F-R-I-I dot com. That's David Crane. That's D-C-R-A-I-N at F-R-I-I dot com. 
Uh, the more data we have, which is all numbers, the more we have a, we call plasma neutron spectroscopy of food, like your veggies, which, by the way, the Europeans gave a notice of not sure, not long after the Fukushima disaster happened. And we're in danger, too, of these earthquakes causing lots of problems elsewhere. For example, if the Aceh, uh, uh, if the Aceh Indonesia one caused that, that major tsunami around, uh, I think it was 2004, around uh, uh, the day after Christmas, we're in very grave danger that the Ring of Fire, which is the most active, uh, if you want to call it volcanic and magma active area in the world, that we're going to see a major quake probably in the next 12 months hitting Japan. Uh, we're also in danger that those quakes, which by the way move clockwise around, so the next place it's going to hit Alaska and then the the uh, subduction zone called the Cascadia subduction zone in Oregon, southern Washington state, and then it's going to, it's going to move toward the area where we just recently had some quakes in Los Angeles uh, that hit the area of Fullerton back in 1985. Those same quake fault zones or sub fault zones around the uh, San Andreas Fault. That fault, by the way, runs all the way through Mexico. They call it something different. It goes down into the Sea of Cortez, all the way back down past the tip of the Baja California. Um, I really think that <clears throat> these major superquakes are going to change the whole situation because most of these nuclear plants in the world are actually on bodies of water either inland oceans, like the Baltic, or they're uh, in areas where they're directly on the, on the sea. Uh, if we lose control, for example, if we have a major tsunami uh, from the, the Azores, which is the uh, Canary Islands, and Cobra Viejo drops, it's going to create a tsunami wave. Some people have estimated that the minimum is 100 feet. It's more likely 800 feet by the time it hits North America. That uh, tsunami wave will completely swamp and destroy those uh, nuclear reactors and cause them to go critical and we'll have a massive Fukushima like multiple events if we have a New Madrid fault or superquake which happened uh, back I think in the 1820s uh, that's the biggest quake by the way in North American history in the modern history of uh, since white man has come here from Europe uh, that quake literally has frozen in the land in Missouri um, so you can actually see the waves there and there's a giant lake that's 26 miles long that didn't exist before the quake so uh, we talked about this in the first segment, uh, uh, Chris. How likely is it that, that these kind of events are going to completely throw any plan they have, not just to restart all these power plants, but also to be able to continue cleaning up this nuclear waste site? What's, well, what's likely to happen is based on experience is another earthquake that some tried. I, mean, I know there was just an 8.2 Chile. And, uh, if that happens, let's go. I mean, it could be anywhere from mild to extremely severe. I hate to be that way about it, non the middle. But uh, let's just say at one end of the spectrum, you can lose power again. I mean, another another, uh, another period of a blackout at the plant. If that right. happens, uh, once again, you lose all the cooling system. And you could, you could literally be back to square zero, uh, square one again, and uh, be in a situation where you are melting again. You know, you're not cooling and eventually, you know, so that, that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is the fact that the most severe, well, then you have actual physical damage to the structures supporting the equipment necessary to, for cooling. And some, some of the equipment is outside. It's not internal to the, uh, the actual plant itself. It's in a non seismic area where uh, you know, remember again, we talked about hastily thrown together systems, those Land tanks that we had talked about that other people are uh, finally talking about too, uh, like that IEEE report that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. They said those tanks were completely inadequate. Well, we said that uh, years ago. We said, oh, that they can't be using those for any long term storage uh, because they will not withstand the size of the event. That's and it's nice that the IEEE also says that. Uh, so then what do you have? You have massive releases of the radioactive material that right. is stored in. So, so right. I mean, and, and of course, right on up to the worst where you actually have building collapse. Like right. So, the, the, let, let's talk about consequences, okay? So, worst case scenario. In the next 12 months, we have a major quake that strikes northern Japan. We don't have American public even, like Arnie Gunnison mentioned, even doing hazmat, which means you have a, a place outside for your, your galoshes, your rubber boots, your shoes, whatever you're going to wear outside your raincoat, your other things, you don't have decon showers, I mean, just even have a, uh, a hose nearby to decon people. They don't have HEPA filters in their home to get, pull up the particles or, you know, radioactive fleas. 
They don't realize a pet will bring in these isotopes also in their fur. <clears throat> so they're not more regularly watching their dog or cat and realizing they're going to be a carrier of, of radioactive fleas into the home that will later get mobilized and embed in their lung tissue uh, or their GI tract and end up in their lungs or their gastrointestinal tract and later get in the splanchnic circulation that can end up embedding in your liver or your pancreas. People are, are not aware of the fact that bioaccumulation over a period of years is going to make their body extremely likely to have certain health problems. Any health problem that you're predisposed to is going to be dramatically increased by these radioactive fleas, cesium and strontium, etc. Uh, any mental illness that you might have had is going to be much more likely to come on, whether it's you know, PTSD, depression, uh, you name the health problem, including autism, it's going to be worse. Uh, I don't think we're prepared for the fact that the end of the nuclear age, the old-style nuclear reactors, is here. We either need safer reactors that won't go critical when you pull the plug on them, we need to have a way of getting safe radioactive waste off-site in a permanent storage facility, and we ultimately need to move to nuclear fusion. And the reason why I say that is that it's all well and good to have you know air you know to have a certain amount of our power generated that generates carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is not a death gas from hell. But if you burned all the fuel in Venezuela, they did a study, and the number of tera moles of energy requiring oxygen would drop the world oxygen concentration to a level that could not support mammals, i.e. we would all die. So uh, one of the theses I've said over and over again is we need to have powerful, like nuclear fusion technology, energy from a vacuum, uh, wind energy, other things, and safe nuclear fusion technology because if we're giving the world chronic lung disease, we're destroying the upper benthic layer of the oceans, we're cutting down the forests, we don't have the capacity to convert CO2 in, in plants back to oxygen. So peak oxygen is a real issue. Not peak fuel, we've got tons of fuel. And we also, by the way, if you have dirty fuel, we're releasing heavy metals and toxic volatile chemicals in the atmosphere, in the troposphere. So uh, this, it's important to readdress these issues. I see the first thing is they're going to try to evacuate uh, Tokyo and uh, surrounding area Japanese. We're going to see it, it directly affect people wanting and desiring to have non-radioactive food in the northern hemisphere, which means a massive move by China already to buy up all the farms and even crops. For example, America just recently bought a large soybean crop from Brazil and sold it to America because the Chinese had speculated and knew it was going to go through the ceiling and they sold it. So the new currency of the future will be safe food. Uh, you're going to start seeing a lot of people getting seriously upset because if there's major releases of radiation, they won't be able to hide the fact that people are getting acute radiation sickness. Uh, mental confusion, vertigo, nausea, rashes, <clears throat> polyarthralgia, which joint pains. I mean, a whole long list of symptoms of acute, low-level, but significant radiation sickness. And the bioaccumulation is going to cause mental and physical and genetic and other health problems that are going to be insurmountable for the completely uninformed, and untrained regular health providers that have no idea what they're facing. None. No training in environmental toxicology, no training in intermediate metabolism, no training on the consequences to the immune system or other organs. Your comments, uh, Chris, because uh, I think that this is going to happen. I think it's going to scare the hell out of everybody uh, when it happens, because they're not going to believe Deagle. They're going to think Deagle's out to lunch. But already we already have this, but Fukushima is just a warning. Next quake won't just be Fukushima. It'll be a whole bunch of other reactors that have lost containment. That's right. A multiple events again. Multiple events out of control completely, and people realizing that they are now have to be trained, as I am saying in this article, you have to start thinking hazmat right now from Ernie Gunderson's comment. If you're not doing that, as this bioaccumulates, you're going to make your host more and more radioactive. Thank you, Chris. I'll be on hour two tonight okay. on the Rents Network as a guest. And, of course, do visit tomorrow again. Listen, or first hour, get your emails out. Michelle is back. The queen of Nutramedical is back with her humor and more. First hour tomorrow with answers to your health issues. 